welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with. It's the interview series presented by WFPK and WFPK.org, Consequence and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thanks as always for making your way here and checking out the series. Of course, you know what to do. If you like what you see and what you hear, hit that subscribe button. I put out three new interviews every single week, so it's a great way to keep up with all of your favorite artists. And I'm so excited to have on for the first time, Carly Pierce. Hello. Hi. It's a pleasure to meet you, and it's exciting because what we're talking about here today is is brand new music. This is sort of what it, what it, this is the new era for you, right? We've got a brand new single called "We Don't Fight Anymore." It features uh, Chris Stapleton, another fellow Kentuckian. I, I say that as you're Kentucky, I'm here in Louisville. It's a big old statewide family thing. I think we got here. I can't even believe that I get to say that I I have a song with. Chris Stapleton. Um, he has been one of my musical heroes, honestly, and just one of the greatest voices. And yes, Kentucky is about to unite. We are very excited. <laughs> now, I, I say that I know there's always a bit of the asterisk for you. You're, you're from Kentucky. It's Northern Kentucky. Um, do you, do you, you know, right outside Cincinnati, do you consider yourself a Kentuckian more than an Ohioan? Yeah, of course. Um, I have the state of Kentucky tattooed on my wrist, so I definitely do. But I also, I mean, I definitely came from that like um, area where I feel like I had the best of both worlds growing up in a small town across the river, but also being able to go to Cincinnati. So I kind of claim all of it. I claim the tri-state area. That's the good safe answer right there. That was well done. You've done this before. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> Well, let's get into this single then. So again, it's not just teaming up with Chris, but this is sort of a, like I said, it feels like a, a new thing for you. This is, this is a bit more Americana. This is, you know, a bit more rootsy. And I think you might get that naturally with him. Where did this song come from? And, and how does it sort of speak to where you are now? I wrote this song. Um, I think, you know, what the era of 29 for me really did for me is it's solidified who I am as an artist and it solidified the style of country music that I want to make. Um, growing up, I really gravitated towards songs that didn't just feel good. They had substance and made you feel something. And I think, you know, I built my career on a song. I busted onto the scene with a song called Every Little Thing. And that was a really, um, I've always been the exception to the rule, I guess, um, since I started and put out music that maybe isn't commercially normal, but seems to work for me. And so I really just started writing from a place of what do I want this next era to be? And I think I just had a sense of confidence of who I was and didn't go in trying to chase anything that I felt like radio needed me to do or my record label. And so I got together with one of my producers, Shane McAnally, um, and one of our friends, Pete Good, and we just wanted to write something real. And I think they would tell you that writing songs with me is a little bit different than the majority of other people because I'm willing to write a really sad heartbreak ballad. I'm, I'm, I'll go there really sad. And, and it's, it's fun because I feel like a lot of times as artists, we're, we're told to not do that. And so I don't know who said it in the room, but somebody said, we don't fight anymore. And we just kind of were off to the races. And I remember getting the demo back from the song and just being like, oh my gosh, um, to me, what, what this song does is it tells a story that I think so many people have lived or are living. We, we live in a world of social media where we give the highlight reel and we don't want to say that anything at home isn't perfect. But I think if people were honest with themselves, um, relationships go cold, even relationships that you don't leave. They have seasons of cold. Um, they have seasons of hot. They have seasons of lukewarm. Um, but I think this is an important season that a lot of people deal with. And I wrote this song not with Chris in mind at all, um, but I got that demo back and I felt, I don't know how to explain it, but I'm obviously somebody who really enjoys collaborating and I just felt like I heard him on it and um, didn't know really what that meant, but the layer that he brought to this song really speaks in a way um, that I feel like he bookended what what this one person was saying by giving his side of the story when the bridge comes and I just think it's a really powerful kind of unique duet mm -hmm. uh you guys sound fantastic together and it feels very yeah. natural I mean in the song and it is it's it, it's a powerful and, and so 
if that's the intro to what you are next, who you are next, you know, I, I mean, is this, do you find this is more of the sound you want to explore on this one? Or are you, are you pulling from anywhere, anybody striving towards something? I, I think rootsy country music is always where I've come from. And I think 29 was the first album that I made that I really felt like collectively from front to back or front to finish was really who I was. And so I think with this one, I'm digging in deeper to that. And just, I don't feel like I'm trying to prove myself to anyone. I think I'm just trying to raise the bar. I feel like all of my heroes, they, they took, you know, who they were and they just continued to try to raise it. And so for me, um, I think this next chapter is just solidifying yet again, like I'm, I'm a traditionalist. I love real country music. Um, I love the instrumentation of that. I think the way that my voice sits in, in my songs is very rootsy. Um, and you know, I've always been somebody that tried to tell my stories in the way that I see the world, um, as a true storyteller and maybe saying some of the things that are a little bit uncomfortable that maybe nobody wants to admit, especially being in the South of maybe how life is really going and life isn't perfect. It's a roller coaster ride. And I want to tell every high and low of that. Um, and so this feels a little bit unexpected probably to people that I would come with this after releasing a divorce album, but I like to keep people on their toes. You <laughs> never know what you're going to get from. Me. Yeah. I, I was going back to, and it's like, I went back to the song truth be told and I was mm -hmm. sort of listening to it in, in the lens of what we're talking about. And I thought, you know, that song, you know, duet or whatever. And I said, it's almost emo country, that one. Like, it's such a fine line. Like, it's one step away, you know, some st distorted guitars. That could have been an emo song right there. And I think, you know, if you're a creative type, if you're a great artist, you can sort of make that decision. Especially, I mean, when we're talking about genre, it's always a fine line anyway. I mean, most of the time we're splitting hairs, I think. But but do you ever else consider, like, you're talking about how your voice just sits in country so nicely and that's what you're drawn to. But do you ever consider those revolving door moments of, of, of who you could be as an artist? I've always found myself as a country music purist. Um, but if something speaks to me in the way that, you know, as a writer, you feel what whatever it is, I have to just feel it. Um, but I think I've always that song in particular, yes, it was a Christian song, but it said something that resonated with me at the time. Um, and so if that, if that resonates like that, I think I'm always going to be open to, to moving in that direction. But I think as far as my music goes, it's always going to be kind of in that traditional country vein. Yeah. Well, and, and on top of that, you do you, you, you messy relationships. I don't know if that's the way <laughs> you do that well in these songs. I know. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's a hallmark. Maybe it's a calling card. How I, I'm trying not to ask it because I'm not asking this as a personal life kind of question, but as a songwriter, like how close to the bone do you get on that stuff versus relating? You know, do you try to draw a line with there? Like, this is too much. I mean, and again, I say that knowing all about that last record was your divorce record. So it feels like it's fair game uh, in that type of writing. Oh, yeah. It's, I mean, and here's the, here's the line that I have to walk continuing on in my career is I've always written songs like this. Like I've always been the one that bleeds out and then they are coming from my personal experiences or people in my life for sure. Um, like this song has resonated to me. There's no way I could have written this song and it not have obviously been a place where I've been. Um, but I think people had for the first time a face to assign with an album in 29. And so now I think moving forward, what people have to understand is just because you knew who that was about, if it was very obvious, it was another public person, um, that is not always going to be the case. This could be something that I experienced a few years ago. This could be something I had a dream about. This could be something that's really happening right now, but it's all a part of my narrative and a part of my story, but it may not be in the current situation. And I think it's just going to be important for me to try to make sure that people understand I'm a, I'm a storyteller of my own stories, but those are stories that have spanned over the 33 years of my life. Right. Doesn't always have to speak for the actual moment that we're in at this point, which mm -hmm. yeah, important distinction. Um, and, and let me back up by the way, because you know, that success that we've been talking about coming off of 29, uh, what he didn't do. I mean, I read, what was that? The first solo woman in 80 weeks to top the charts, which is like two-sided, right? Congratulations, but what the hell? 
80 weeks? <laughs> no. How is it's that crazy. still happening? I know. I think we're we're definitely in a phase where the women are dominating, but you know, I mean, that is a really crazy statistic. Um, and I hope that it continues. I think you have to have the people like myself and the few others that are getting there continue to show people that people want to hear women on the radio. And we've, we've come a long way since I came onto the scene, but I think we're still, we're still massaging some things. <laughs> It is long past due to to break that rule right there, or what you know, used to be a rule, and I don't think it is anymore. But still, but you know, and and just knowing how you know, seeing seeing how you represent in those moments, seeing how you're always waving the flag of your heroes. I mean, it was great seeing you doing the duet with Trisha Yearwood on the award show the other nights, and and I know that you know at this point, like you're making friends, but are those still a little bit of like pinch me moments? Yeah, of course. The the fact that Trish and I are friends, <laughs> when you think about somebody that in your bedroom, you were listening to her, blaring her music, wondering if you could ever be like her. And now you're right there with her um, and she respects you. It's wild. I mean, I, I, you could never, I don't know that I could ever even put into words what, what it means to now um, be amongst the next generation of the people that made me want to do this. And now having that responsibility of understanding that one day there's going to be another generation that's going to look at me like that. And I need to make sure that I'm doing what, what I feel like Trisha did for people like me um, in every sense of the word. Yeah. Well, that was great. And of course, Dolly's there. And I know you've got the history with Dolly. Have you heard the new Dolly record? I haven't, but I am. She's just, you want to talk about somebody that continues to raise their bar. And she doesn't yeah. have to. Um, that to me is like a true queen. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what she said. She's like, okay, so I'm going to be in the Rock and Roll of Fame. All right, I'll do a rock and roll record. And she pulls out a rock and roll record with every great rock star in the world wanting to be a part of it. I mean, and every everybody would have, yeah. Nobody says no it's, to that. It's, yeah. No. No. <laughs> She's amazing. Uh, I so appreciate what you're doing out there. Uh, I love this song. We don't fight anymore. I'm such a fan. And of course, I'm such a fan of Chris Stapleton, too. So seeing, hearing the two of you all together, it's fantastic. I cannot wait to hear how this takes off to the next record, this whole era. I'm on board. Congratulations. And thank you so much for taking the time to talk about it. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. And thanks to my guest. Also, thanks to you. For, uh, for checking out the episode in the series. Before you get out of here, hit that subscribe button. Again, uh, you get three brand new interviews every single week. New and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at uh, right here on YouTube or, of course, anywhere in podcast land, including iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, or WFPK.org as well. A great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover new ones as well. Then after that, actually head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, bonus interviews, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at WFPK.org. Consequence has your music and film news. You can also find me on the social media spots, uh, Facebook, Instagram, mostly on Twitter. All three of them, the address is at Kyle Meredith. Do hope you like and follow along. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time.